What's up guys? So today we're going to be going over my top five underrated nano fish for saltwater aquariums. These are all fish that I think would fit well in almost every nano environment. Uh, some require a little bit bigger tanks than others and maybe a little bit more expertise. But generally speaking, these are beginner fish, things that are a little bit outside of the box that I think would work great in a lot of different atmospheres for nano tanks. So let's get right into it. All right, coming in at number five, we have the black Ocelaris clownfish. Ocelaris, Ocelaris, however you pronounce it. Now I know what you're thinking, obviously a clownfish is a very common fish. However, a lot of people fail to recognize how awesome the black ones are. Um, a lot of people, when they try to think outside of the box for clownfish, they try to go with maroons or tomatoes or a really expensive designer brand type. But I think these are just as cool, honestly, as normal clownfish. They're super easy to take care of. They're not that expensive. They're only about 35 bucks. And I think it's a safe bet for those who really wanna get outside of the box with clownfish and get something different, but really don't wanna get risky, like I said, with those other ones. Uh, they can grow up to about four inches, um, but you probably won't even get that big. And they also work really well in pairs. Shout out to all the pair. All right, number four, we have the Royal Grama. Now these are super easy to take care of. I've had so much success with all of these and I would recommend it to anybody, especially a beginner who has a smaller size nano tank. They can grow up to about three inches, so they're not that big at all, but they're really active, fun fish. And they're also super vibrant. I love the, the purple and yellow combination. I call it my LSU fish. And uh, they really are fun to watch, swim around. They're very active, very peaceful though. All right, coming in at number three, we have the Diamond Watchman Goby, otherwise known as the Sand Sifting Goby or Sleeper Goby. Now, these are my favorite part of a cleaning crew. And when you think of cleaning crew, a lot of people will think of hermit crabs, snails, even some invertebrates like cleaner shrimp. But these guys are fantastic with cleaning up a sand bed. They literally, you put them in any nano environment and give them a matter of a week or so and it will be clean. Like these guys get to work. They grind on that sand bed. Now, they say that they can get up to about six inches, but even if that's true, um, really all they need is a nice deep sand bed for them to burrow in, uh, nice rock formations that they can get under. Um, these can fit in almost any size nano tank, honestly. They're really active, they're really fun to watch do their work on the sand, and they're not that expensive either. They're only about uh, 25 to 30 bucks. I would definitely recommend this, especially if you are anticipating or you already have some sort of algae problem in your tank. All right, coming in at number two, we have one that's a little bit more controversial, but I'm gonna put them on here and I'll explain why, is the six line wrasse. Um, they're very active, beautiful fish. I love the coloration on these guys and they're just such a fun fish to watch, especially in a nano environment. Now, the reason why I say this is controversial is some people say that six lines need a lot of space to, to roam around. Now that might be true in a lot of scenarios and I definitely wouldn't recommend putting this fish in a smaller nano tank. I'm talking 10 to 15 gallons. I, I would think that you would put it in a, a larger size, say a 30 gallon or so. So a lot of people are going to say that these fish need like 40 to 50 gallons of space when honestly, I don't think they need near that much. Really, I just think that these guys need um, a lot of, you know, nice rock formations, places they can swim in and out and also not to be packed into a tank that's already has a lot of established larger fish in it. Um, just make sure that you give it an environment that you know that it can flourish in, it's not packed in, but I wouldn't listen to a lot of those people that say that they need a larger environment. Sometimes if you get them, um, obviously the, the bigger ones, they might require that, but generally speaking from my own experience and some friends' experience, they've had no problem keeping these fish in 20, 30 gallon environments. I definitely wouldn't stick it in anything smaller than that, but I think that these guys are overlooked quite often because of that stigma that they need to be in a much larger tank than what they seem to be. I think overall, uh, if you have a lot of spaces for them to swim in and out of, and you don't have a lot of aggressive tank mates, these guys can be a focal point, an amazing part of a nano environment. Um, and also, they're known to feed on some on one, like unwanted pests on live rock, such as uh, 
bristle worms and other bad things that you don't want in your tank. And they're only about 25 bucks. So yeah, I would definitely recommend these guys if you have the right environment for it. All right, and number one, I have the Neon Dotty Back. These guys are, I think, the most underrated fish in the entire aquarium trade. Yeah, I really do think that. They are extremely easy to take care of from my own experience. They have this brilliant color to them, this orangish yellow and the, the blue stripe on top. It's one of my favorite fish to watch, honestly. Like I said, they're pretty easy to take care of. Uh, some, some of them will prefer carnivorous foods such as uh, blood worms or mice shrimp, uh, but that's not every case. So make sure before you get these that you check with the vendor, whether it be a local fish store or online. Uh, ask them what they're being fed. Uh, they're, most places are super open about what they feed their fish. And so you can mimic that and make it an easier transition to your tank. And they can grow up to about four inches, um, but really is kind of like the six line as long as they have good rock formations to go in and out of and not match with anything aggressive or other dotty backs, they'll be perfectly fine in a nano environment. And I'm getting a 20 gallon nano tank in a little while, which I'll do a video on the setup of that. Um, but I definitely want this fish in there. Um, and I had them in my 30 gallon bio cube and they did really well. And I'm anticipating they do really well in this tank too. All right guys, so thanks for watching this video. Um, I hope you take these suggestions and you check these fish out more. Make sure to do research on all these fish. If you like this video, uh, make sure to leave a like and subscribe while we're coming up with more videos. Like I said, that tank setup and some more stuff about fish and coral. Thanks guys, have a good one.